Juror nullification is the idea that an individual juror can make a decision to acquit a defendant when the evidence proves beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant committed the crime, but the juror thinks in the juror's own judgment that a criminal prosecution is not proper in this case. I think a much more accurate term is conscientious acquittal. They are acquitting somebody as a matter of conscience. They're not nullifying anything. The real debate is over whether to encourage jury nullification, whether to talk to the jurors about it, uh, whether to have a more official role for it. Jury nullification sounds at first like a great idea, but there are big problems with it. The first problem is that it gives the decision to anyone, to any one person. They may have good ideas for what is just, they may have really bad ideas for what is just. Of course, we would all think we would exercise that power for just ways. But think of your crazy Uncle Ed or crazy Aunt Edna. You never know what decision she would make. And jury nullification gives that power to her to hang a jury just on one vote. Both judges and prosecutors seem to lack confidence that the system would be able to operate uh, equitably if juries were advised about this power that everybody acknowledges that they have and that has been a feature of Anglo-American common law going back for centuries. But for whatever reason, judges and prosecutors are desperate to make sure that juries don't know about jury nullification and that the subject does not come up during a trial, even though everybody agrees it's a legitimate part of the institution. The second big problem with jury nullification is that we intentionally don't tell the jury the facts they would need in order to exercise that power appropriately. And we do that in order to protect the constitutional rights of the defendant. We don't want the jury to know about other bad acts the defendant committed or other prior convictions the defendant has or all sorts of evidence that might have been suppressed but might be relevant to the decision to bring a criminal prosecution. We keep the jury in the dark about those issues in order to protect the defendant's constitutional right. We have a standard under the Constitution of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. The jury's job is to determine did those facts happen beyond a reasonable doubt? That's what prosecutors and judges want you to believe, that the only legitimate role of a jury is to just determine facts. Throughout most of our history, fact-finding and injustice preventing were understood to be not only legitimate, but important and indeed indispensable features of a criminal jury. Only within the last few decades have judges and prosecutors essentially worked together to remove from the equation the injustice preventing and government limiting function of a jury by creating this myth that the only legitimate role of a jury is fact-finding. The third problem with jury nullification is that it pushes against the rule of law. We have a system in which we have all three branches of government that need to be working together in order to have a criminal conviction. First, in order for a criminal prosecution to be brought, the legislature has to say that general class of conduct is a crime. Second, the executive branch, the prosecutor, who is also elected or nominated by somebody who's elected, has to decide that that's an appropriate prosecution in that case. Third, the case needs to be procedurally proper. Everyone's going to get a defense attorney. It's going to go before the court. The court's going to determine whether there's sufficient evidence in the court's view. There are a lot of checks. In addition, executive clemency after a prosecution is brought if a conviction is obtained. So we have a lot of checks in the system already. And the question is whether adding in an encouragement of jury nullification would make that system better or would make that system worse. Our criminal justice system today is absolutely facing a crisis of legitimacy because we virtually eliminated citizen participation in the system. We virtually eliminated the ability of citizens to serve as a check on the government and to prevent the government from pursuing and ultimately succeeding in convicting people when it would be unjust to do so. And so we start with bad terminology during nullification, which leads us to uh, draw an incorrect conclusion, which is that this institution, conscientious acquittal, which has been a part of our history for hundreds and hundreds of years, um, somehow threatens the rule of law or, or threatens the legitimacy of the criminal justice system. Jury nullification is a tool that can be used for justice, but it's also a tool that can be equally used for injustice. As a practical matter, it just takes one person with their idiosyncratic views to stop a criminal case if they're exercising jury nullification. And in a case where you think it's important for the law to be enforced, Encouraging that person to exercise jury nullification when they think the prosecution isn't important is a recipe for a lot of randomness in the criminal justice system, which I don't think we want.
I believe that jurors should absolutely be instructed about conscientious acquittal. And they should also be advised that they have the power to acquit a factually guilty defendant if they believe that the punishment that the government proposes to inflict, the consequences of a guilty verdict, would be unjust. Those are two pieces of information that jurors are routinely denied in our current system that they would have been given during the founding era and that they should be given in order to have an appropriately just and well-functioning criminal justice system here.